The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see faces, and I look forward to going virtually as well. We have several announcements. I would like to make a few. If you were unaware, as I was, we had our congregational meeting at 10.15, not 10.30, and the following are our new elders for session. Sam DiCarlo, Amber Lewis Stewart, and Blake Davis. Um, that's going to be the letter to one know that we had our uh, picnic and mingle last Friday night, and it was a great success because a lot of the people from Telos, Southminster, and our child care center came and visited, and we will be doing this every Friday night, I'm sorry, every other Friday night, <laughs> if the weather permits. Now Barbara has an announcement. Light it up, this is Pentecostal. I would have an announcement. We are the church together, but what binds the church together here and around the world? God's grace that calls and accepts us as we are, God's acceptance that enables us to love God and to love others and each other and ourselves. God's gift of Jesus, whose life shows us how to do it. And the Holy Spirit that is in us, among us, can be important. But Pentecost is all about, as you can know. For the church here and worldwide to continue as our life stands, we have to pass this on to children and youth and young adults. That's what Pentecost all means. Please give the words to us for a moment. In our first scripture today, we're going to hear about the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel has a vision of dry gold in a mountain, and they receive fire, breath, and sin and flesh after they encounter the Word of God. When they arise, they receive spirit, and they dance. As Easter people, we celebrate the Spirit that continues to inform and enliven us as Christians. But, like the early Christians, we are not just Easter people, we are also Pentecost people. And the recipients of the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God in our sins for us, and use it even when we think we can remember it to the dance floor. <laughs> Please pray with me. 
holy one, justice seeker, lover of creation. Praise to you for your indwelling spirit that moves within our minds. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you, so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God's Spirit did not leave us after the first Pentecost. The Spirit is still with us, empowering us to know mercy and grace, forgiveness and service. In this Spirit and through Christ, we proclaim the good news. We are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. 
I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the bread thus says the lord god come from the four winds of bread and breathe upon me slain that they may live i prophesied as god commanded me and the bread came into them and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude then god said to me mortal these bones are the whole house they say, our bones are dried up, but our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
and just be what you do. And listen to what I say. If you lose a month run, as you suppose, we're in a nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was going through the top of the door. In the last days it will be, God declares, and I will pour out the spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, those men and women, in those days I will pour out the Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall prophesy. The word of God for the church today. So, one thing is clear God was letting people hear these words in their own heart. And what is a sign that God is ever ready to go rock on the rock? The Spirit of God is making sure that as the church was starting out, there was this monster work, clearly, not just for a certain people, not just for a certain ethnicity or nationality or social class. Everyone was included in this moment. And side note, for anyone wondering about the tongues, this was Xenobay, which is speaking in foreign tongues. That's different than Glossobay, which is speaking in unknown tongues. And Paul writes about that in the other books of the and before the Christians. But this was a chance for each person to hear this good news in their own heart. Have you ever been in a place where no one spoke in that language? When I lived in Italy for the summer, hearing nothing but Finnish around me for days on the end, and when you hear something said in English, it was as if all other sounds faded away, and the sound of my own language, words that I could only understand, went straight to my ears and my heart. To hear your own language in a strange place is like a small homecoming. It's an island of humanity in the sea of strangers. God is continually preparing you to bring the good news to this cosmopolitan group of people gathered in Jerusalem and make sure each of them could hear it in their own home tongues, in their heart. So we have twins, wind and people speaking in language they've never studied. Big exciting stuff, but why? Why did this happen? Why is it included in our scripture? Now, in hindsight, we see it as the establishment of the church. But what was it in that moment? What Peter says gives us clues as to what he thought would happen. Peter, this is Peter who denied meeting Jesus three times. Peter, who wept bitterly. As he realizes the trail of Jesus, that Peter is the one who gives the first sermon in the church's existence. So don't ever tell someone else that my intimate time with the best is not sacred. Peter recalled words from the prophet Joel saying that God's spirit would be poured out, that there would be visions and dreams and prophecies of all kinds of people. Part of the dreams and the visions and the prophecies that in the church have all the parents. God intends for all of us to be filled with and guided by the Holy Spirit. Come up with the Holy Spirit and then you hope for a moment. And you'll get a prophecy and you'll get a vision and you will get a dream. Everybody will get a dream. Who would go along to invite all who were present to join in this new dream? This discipleship, this following the name of the risen and ascended Jesus, this influence of the Holy Spirit. What is God up to in all this? The Holy Spirit is new, is there a creation? I've heard about the church to take the disease and all that. But this kind of outpouring of the Holy Spirit is new. I remind you that there were some folks there who were distinctly unprohibited. So let's remember for the sake of the church, the 
But just because something makes us uncomfortable or is a risk, it hasn't been done before. It doesn't mean it's not from God. God is very far from asking us to set aside old assumptions and old ways of doing it in favor of new truths and new ways and new ways of doing it. So Peter struggles on the widespread expressing of nature of God's spirit as he poured all of our flesh. An invitation for us to be able to as the gift of this foundational story of the church passed down from generation to the next. We too are invited to join us to envision and to call truth. So what keeps us in the front is inviting you. We're inviting you. We are spiritual descendants of those same people. Keeps us from dreaming and dreaming. I think many churches are reluctant to dream because they are afraid. And I think there is a real danger in being trapped in fear to the point that it keeps us from getting caught up in the dreams and visions of the Holy Spirit. I share with you three ways that fear holds us back from the visions and the dreams and the prophecies. First, for fear of being disappointed or a failure, or just letting it off. We're afraid to get our hopes up in case things don't work out. We're afraid that we'll dream so big that we can't live out the dreams. We're afraid to trust that the Holy Spirit would speak to us and that we get it wrong. And to that fear, I would say this God wants more for us than what innovation is doing. God wants to pour out our spirit on all of God's people to give us strength to bless in our neighborhood, of giving us strength to the weak and courage to the fearful and speaking out the truth, speaking out for justice right where we need it. Oh, we're going to fail. We might. But God seems to make a heart for surprising transformation and renewal in the book. Second kind of fear that keeps us from dreaming is the fear of the sneers of others, the fear of our opinion. In our scripture passage today, we're going to see many disciples of growth. This fear of the negative opinions of others, the judgment of others. I think sometimes we are afraid that our big dreams will look childish or overly simplistic to someone else. And to that fear, we can say this. It would be well to remember that the capacity to think and imagine like a child is what Jesus has up as sort of basic skills in that kingdom. And others look at the stance of us and our dreams. We think of the way that company is being a disaster. A third fear that can keep us from dreaming is to I was a grouchy for a few weeks and just never really hard to like the way my friends were with each other. But the multicultural, multilingual nature of the Holy Spirit's movement on that first Pentecost, the great reminder that the identity of the church extends beyond the habits or the practices or the comfort zone of any particular congregation or denomination or a particular set of cultural traditions. In the face of that fear of change, we remember the Pentecost, the establishment of the church, is a celebration of Christ who widely interrupted in mind blowing proportion. And that the church has always been in a state of transition. It's a lot of changing in this stagnating environment. So what do we do with this all today? All this stuff. I think our challenge is to encourage one another to dare to ask God for dreams. To dare to, dare to ask God for dreams for ourselves, for our families, for our neighborhood, and for our own church. Will we get it wrong some of the time? Most definitely. But as I say, 
Yes, 100% of the calls you have are sorry. Well, it's look just like that first Pentecost, because the devil was speaking in tongues and claiming to stuff. That is really crazy for us to experience. Because, you know, we've got to throw some changes. I don't think it's going to look any more like that first Pentecost than the 21st century natural will look like the first century Protestant. That's an odd way to read that. How do we share the one if some dreams die in the administrative machine, I think it's really important to make this uh, processes. Of course, the structure is necessary so that we're not in some sort of ecclesiastical church free for all. Some kind of systems are important to move our life together along. But having these systems and structures can also be used to insulate us from change. In our neighborhood, right around the street, we are surrounded by families who are exhausted and burned out and vulnerable and left wounded by the past 15 months. We are surrounded by people who need a feeling and a wholeness and a place to belong. What dreams and visions might the Holy Spirit pour out to help us meet those needs? We're also close to some very needy people over on Mullins Hill Road. What dreams might come with some prayer about that? We've just elected a new class of elders to lead us into the future. Let's pray for them to have open hearts and minds for the dreams and the visions God will give us as we move into the new chapters of our ministry, of our being the church together. God will not stop giving us dreams, because that is how God is. So let's pray for big ones and the courage to step into them. In the name of the one who gives us dreams, and gives dreams and visions to all of us children. Amen. Our moment of generosity. If we want to experience the real spirit of joy that God meant for us to have, we must be willing to do something. We have to step outside ourselves and reach out to others. We must stop passing by the needs of others and react to those needs with a heart of compassion, love, and generosity. It's true that we can't do everything, but we can do something. We can pick one cause, one charity, one family, one friend, one something that will become the object of our help, kindness, and generosity. We can answer the call of our hearts to contribute to being a solution for someone else's concerns. God will use us in the smallest effort so it becomes someone's, someone else's greatest joy. I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do.
strength for our nation, for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit. We remember those who are suffering, those who are ill and in need of healing, those who are discouraged or deeply weary and in need of encouragement, those who battle mental illness, surrounded by people who may not understand. We lift together all of those who have been named this morning and all those we keep in the quiet of our hearts, trusting that you know the needs. Let us pray together. Come, Father, and restore our lives. Teach me the training. Amen. Amen. 